Hey guys, it's Carl, brand new year 2022, and a lot of you asked if I could create a vid around my productivity or my typical day to day, just to give you guys some tips and maybe a bit more behind the scenes of what I do every single day. And they pretty much start out the exact same, 7.30 a.m., that's mostly because my girlfriend works um, as a physio in Barrie, that's around an hour and a half drive from Toronto. So she's got the long commute, I'm up this early as well, so just kick things off with a shower. Breakfast this morning consists of smoked salmon, a little coffee to get the day started, and I always start off with emails first. I find that they just require a lot more thought, a lot more energy, and since the morning is typically the time when I'm the most productive, I kind of just park myself here in the living room. I've uh, plopped the camera on top of this little package delivery. I'll uh, kind of show you what that looks like in a second, but uh, emailing for an hour as I eat my breakfast is usually how I start, and I am an Outlook user. That's kind of my guilty tech pleasure. And um, yeah, let's crush an hour of emails. And typically my packages, I bring them over to my studio, but since I know what this kind of is, it's from uh, TaylorMade. I know that it's golfing related and I don't think this will even fit in my car. We'll just do a really quick unboxing here. So this is the new Stealth Carbon or Carbon Stealth driver. And there is quite a bit of tech that goes into these clubs now. And typically before drivers and woods were made of titanium, pretty light, but now they're made out of carbon, or I guess that's what Taylor made is putting into their drivers. So 60 layers of carbon on the face. It just means the overall feel of the club will be lighter, which means that you can swing it faster, which should result in a farther drive. I guess that's the theory. Um, I can't wait to test this out once we hit a new season. It's of course the winter now. I was actually just golfing out in Vegas. I wish I had this um, then, but this will kind of stay in this package and it comes with this cool little press kit, which I will show you guys. Inside of here, it looks like a paint can, but I've seen other unboxings already. We just have a little divot tool and ball marker, so that's kind of cool. Of course, the driver itself, there's a little close-up of the face, and you can see 60 times carbon on the face. You can actually swap these out. I have an orange face on order. Yeah, this definitely wouldn't fit into my car, but now that's kind of done. Um, we'll pack up the tech, and Link loves to collect socks. Link, what's this? Are you collecting socks again? He'll probably lift his leg up for, oh yeah, a little, little scratch, little scratch. We'll take Link out for his morning walk and then we'll uh, head to the studio. Hey buddy. All right, we've got a uh, car bag person, Link about to go in. The chalk monster is actually stored for the winter. We'll give a little sneak peek, battery out just to preserve. More on that in a bit. Link gets into the back. Good job, buddy. Nice and safe. And bags go in. And thankfully right now, my commute to the studio is around 10 minutes. As of uh, right now in January, Ontario is back under lockdown again, so there's just no traffic. Yeah, so it isn't a bad commute. And um, a lot of people have asked about uh, this car in specific. Link is just chilling in the back there. So this is a 2012 BMW 128i. I've been trying to perhaps upgrade, but the more I've been looking, the more I actually Kind of just love this car. It's um, it's stick shift. It's all analog. You don't have any of the digital dashes. No sticky fingerprints. It's naturally aspirated, which means there are no problems. Um, I've had this car for close to a decade, and I haven't had one check engine light. And that's the nice thing about uh, yeah, naturally aspirated engines, and uh, nothing can kind of go wrong. So I think this is perhaps a uh, a modern classic. I know that term is kind of overused. I truly love the styling on this era of BMWs, and I know they've gotten bigger over the ages. They've got a pretty ugly uh, front grille, the, uh, the dual nostrils now for all of their uh, M series, which I despise. I love how small this car is. It's a great car for in the city. It's got a great interior, all leather. Uh, Link seems to love it. So yeah, as of right now, no current plans of uh, swapping this out. And um, I think I'll have this one for a long time. All right, Link, back at the studio. All right, and <laughs> you can see what an utter chaos the studio is right now because uh, of, I guess, CES, end of year. 
we just haven't had time to give this a clean. So this is what, um, I'm not gonna say organized chaos looks like, I would just say it's chaos. And uh, Link's first thing that he does, don't mind all the cables, workout gear is uh, he scoots to underneath here because he knows he gets a little treat every morning. You know. Oh, and I'm getting a phone call. Okay, enjoy. So you guys kind of know what this studio looks like, or I guess the shape that it's in right now. And before I start any work here, I usually want to hit a workout just to get the blood moving, just to get, uh, I guess, the brain a bit more stimulated. So workout time, 9.30, almost 10 o'clock. Um, let's hit it. And I kind of just always keep a pair of workout clothes kicking around in the studio for my at-home workouts, because that's sadly still the norm. And I am using the Tempo, specifically the Tempo Move, which you can kind of see off to the corner beside me. And the great thing about the Move, it just takes up such little space. And in my studio, you can probably see off to this side, I have just collected so much tech from the end of Q4 from last year. A small little pile is kind of growing. So I only have this small little quadrant to work out in but that's typically all you need for a 45 minute slash hour workout with a move. And with Tempo's classes, you can just choose on the app what kind of workouts that you wanna focus on. I'm mostly in the strength category, but my new year's resolution actually this year was to focus a bit more on mobility. I feel like my old man is, is creeping up on me. My uh, lower back is giving me some issues. So maybe one to two times a week, I try to hit a yoga or a mobility session. So I picked my class for the day, which happens to be an upper body burn. I've mounted my iPhone onto the core, which is that little unit off to the side. I've got my weights handy with me, two uh, 20 pounders, which should be enough for upper body. Let's get the heart rate going. And I actually have my heart rate monitor kind of strapped on. Let's crush this workout and uh, yeah, start the day. So you can see here for the first exercise, the coach is doing dumbbell hammer curls, a great exercise to isolate biceps and also target your forearms. And what makes this great is the guidance system and weight recognition, which makes it way better than following along on say a standard YouTube video. It actually feels a bit more immersive, like you're actually following along for a coach that's giving you tips, so that's awesome. Points are 82 points, 283 on the leaderboard. I gotta step it up. My heart rate's gotta go up a bit. And for this last one, I decided to include some squats in here just because you can never miss leg day. A lot of you guys flake me for missing leg day. This is just dumbbell squats. Three, two, so, as per my New Year's resolution, I wanted to uh, hit some uh, stretching every day. So this one is just to finish off, it's called Happy Hamstrings. And uh, we'll try to stretch these guys because they're obviously really tight. This is like the absolute limit. <laughs> I don't know if I uh, need more of this or this is just sad, but clearly this is something that I'm trying to improve on too. I think I'm like breathing harder during this than actual like strength workout. Oh my goodness, this is where you'll really see how I struggle. I can barely reach my toes here. Oh, thank you hamstrings. Okay, so 30 minute workout, 10 minute stretch. We hit a 40 minute workout for the day. And like I said, I am actively trying to get better at mobility. It's, um, it's just a numbers game. I just need to keep at it. And hopefully when we check back in for my next day in the life productivity vid, I can touch my toes. I'm almost there. So workout done for the day. Forgot to wear a fitness watch, but that's okay. The next thing I kind of do is product testing. And this will actually be my first unboxing for 2022 and the cool thing, this is like my on deck table. This is where the overhead rig is for my studio. Obviously we've got some great lighting, so natural windows there. Of course, this giant light here and onto this side, we've also got that main light over this way. So really well lit area. You can actually see all the products lined up uh, for review today. All of these have come uh, while I was gone at CES. And actually right here is the little clip where we'll slide this camera. So we can actually do this in one go. This camera will come down, this will line up, and I can actually zoom in, move this table, and we've got a pretty decent over the head setup. And if we actually just adjust the lighting now on camera, 
that looks like a pretty decent over the head rig setup. And you can actually see here, these little boards, these are just uh, little background boards. We've got some marble, we've got some concrete, and of course some orange boards, all just to give the set or the overhead rig some different uh, themes or different layouts. So we'll just zoom in quickly and you can see the three different things and we can actually unbox these all live. We've got um, some D-Brand stuff, we've got some phones, we've got some AR glasses, and of course, some other little goodies. So first off, we've got the D-Brand Dark Plates 2.0. These are just a replacement panel for the PlayStation 5. And what's kind of cool, um, a little backstory, D-Brand actually got a cease and desist from their first Dark Plates from PlayStation saying, you gotta stop making them, they're too similar to ours, so they, course swap them around they have little venting on the inside and a cool little easter egg if we can actually zoom in here quickly dbrand is kind of known for trolling the internet they actually put the cease and desist letter in morse code so 0101 kind of engraved into this plate so that's kind of cool of course these just slap on to your current playstation 5 so we'll actually do that in a second and there's also a couple extra skin accessories that go on just to make it a bit more unique so obviously dbrand known for customizing all of the cool gadgets and tech that's one next up we've got some headphones from nothing and these kind of got a lot of buzz from the creator of one plus so carl pay they decided to branch out to create these headphones i believe casey neistat's actually an investor as well so you've got two different pairs you've just got the uh, standard black and of course boom I feel like I'm doing a Casey Neistat unboxing here. Just really rough, really rugged. So here's the earbuds and what makes these cool. You can actually see through them and see all the internals. They of course have the two colors now, both black and white. So I'll kind of test these out over the next couple days, let you know what I think. And since I've got two pairs, obviously uh, maybe I'll keep one as a giveaway for one of you guys. So in the comments, let me know white, black, which one do you prefer? And I'll throw in one of these nothing stickers as well. Uh, <laughs> moving on, we've just got some new notebooks that I ordered just for some B-roll stuff. So we've got a new Porsche 911 book. We have some new 2022 calendar notebooks. And I typically just have these for B-roll and just wanted to update the year for, of course, 2022. Any of you Germans out there, Leuchtturm, Leuch, 19. What's 19? 19, 19, 17, Leuch. From 1970. My German needs some work. <laughs> Moving on, we've got a pair of AR glasses. So these are the Rokid Airs. And obviously AR is just getting more and more integrated into everyday tech. And here are the glasses themselves. These look kind of funky. They might look like Tron. We'll test these out also, maybe after this. And inside here, just all the regular cables. Thank you, Rokid. Uh, the two last things for unboxing, the Vivo V23 and V23 Pro. So pop this out and here's the V23. And I dig that squarish design. I'm always a fan of square design phones. And uh, this has kind of like a champagne colorway. That's really nice. And the V23 Pro, once again, very similar colorway, not as squared of a design. So this one's a bit more round. And this one actually has the 108 megapixel triple cam compared to the standard V23 with just the 64 megapixel cam. So once again, that's just my quick unboxings. I've done them kind of live. And then after this, I test all these items out. And that's what I would say would take the longest time. And uh, once I test them out, I do go to the main seat. So we'll take, for example, the Rokid Airs. These are kind of the most different from most of the tech that we've seen. Um, and we'll take them this way and I will bring them here. This is the set that most of you guys are familiar with. Maybe I just have to clean out some of that stuff and we'll mount this camera here. So this is kind of the seat that I think most of you are familiar with. If you've seen my videos in the past year and a half, close to two years, this is the A-roll setup place. And right now we're actually recording with my A-roll cam. We'll actually switch to that and we'll switch away from my lav mic to the microphone that I think most of you are used to hearing. I guess I'm just gonna stare here now. And um, yeah, if you've watched my videos for the past two years, this is the area in the studio that um, we kind of record all of these regular vids, all my reviews, all of, my unboxings, I guess. And uh, this is what I call the trifecta setup, usually because it has three desks. So we've got desk A, desk B with the main computer and desk, I guess three or desk C over there, which is my gaming slash PC rig mostly for streaming. But anyways, the Rokid Airs that I brought over, we can actually show this off on the B cam right now. That's typically living 
off to the side, obviously not in the main shot, but we've just got it here for the sake of this video. And you can see here, this is where we get all these secondary shots. So right now, this is the Rokid Air box. And uh, if we actually bring the main product up top, this is one of the first pairs of affordable AR glasses. It's on Indiegogo right now or Kickstarter. They've raised over a million bucks. And uh, if you can actually see me slide them on, this is what the future is gonna look like. It's all around AR. And it does take a bit of time to get used to. I did a little IG stories poll and a lot of you thought, uh, yeah, it does look weird. But once you actually get used to using a pair of AR glasses, that's where the image will actually show across these little screens in the front. Maybe um, some actual designers will come up with a way to make these look half decent or just not as strange looking. I'll of course leave the Kickstarter campaign down below, but what makes these unique is the field of vision view. You get 120 inches across the display and that's 1080p. So 1920 by 1080 in each eye. So that's 1080p times two. Does that make that 4K? Um, resolution whiz, please help me out. It's got a screen refresh rate of 75 Hertz and to typically pair that to a smartphone. So I've got my Galaxy Z Fold 3 here. It does come with a cable inside of the box. And from there it connects and this is the cable that gives power to the actual glasses. You can rock this over an iPhone as well. You just need a little adapter and then you'll just need to launch the Rokid Air app. Okay, so now we've launched the Rokid Air app and your phone essentially becomes the little trackpad and I am recording now and you can see my finger kind of going through the main menu here, kind of pointing at different things. So this is the app drawer. You've got things like cinema, AR store, uh, browser settings. And you can actually see some of the different apps that you can download. We actually just got Reflex 2. And going through my little controller here, you can actually scroll down with two fingers. So it's got these standard gestures that uh, I think most of us are used to. So we'll swipe back. And uh, as an example, we'll head to cinema and we will watch some YouTube. And maybe we can actually find some of my videos on YouTube. And right now, oh, there's my video on the home screen. So what's in my tech travel bag? Posted that earlier in the year. I'm watching one of my own ads. Thank you for the extra one cent and we can hit maximize. And because this has built-in speakers, you guys can't hear this. Maybe I'll try to uh, maximize the volume, but there are two speakers built in to the headset. And I'm watching myself now in 120 inches. So that's kind of cool. And wherever I turn my head, I can see my face. Um, that's a bit of inception. And I'm sure on camera right now, you can see the little screen in each of the eyes. And once again, both of these are 1080p images. It's kind of cool and you know, I can swipe through the rest of YouTube. I can even watch Mr. Beast stuff right there, what's on the news. And uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. And if I want, I can always watch something on Netflix. I actually just crushed Silent Sea. Definitely recommended to everyone out there. You can see some of the social media apps that we've got, Google, Facebook, Twitter, even Reddit. And heading on over to the app list drawer, uh, you can see that I've just installed Reflex 2. That's right above the record button. And, that's and in this game, it's a pretty standard shoot 'em up and you can actually upgrade your guns to get into cool things like tanks. And the best part, you can actually pair this with an Xbox controller. So it's a way better gaming experience. And you can kind of see I'm looking around, trying to find an enemy, trying to lock on and essentially destroy him to get through the level. And there's also a bunch of different games that you can download and try out from the App Store. And it's just fun to play games in a different format in kind of the AR space. And that's really dope. You can always sync up, play some games. And then now that we're back to, I guess, the main menu, let me switch back to the Rokid Air controller. And then now I can continue on through my app drawer. So that's really cool. If you want that full immersive AR experience, obviously way better gaming on 120 inches versus on your small display. And these will only just get better over time as more apps become available. I think uh, Rokid is doing a really cool thing here. You know, going back to the app store, Fruit Maze. Oh, they even have an NES emulator. Dope. Let's check this out. I'm gonna grab this quickly, get. Okay, let's quit this. Uh, super fun and a bit nostalgic testing that out. I think Rokid is doing some really cool stuff. Around 85 grams for the pair of AR goggles or I guess glasses themselves. So it's not too heavy. I didn't get any fatigue or anything in the last kind of half an hour that I've been testing them. You've got 10,000 to one contrast ratios, 43 degrees of field of vision, and you have these little knobs on each 
of the eyes to fine tune it uh, for however good or poor your eyes are. So yeah, definitely worth checking out the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you're looking to get into the AR space as I definitely think that is the future. And now that we've recorded this little bit, uh, or I guess this little mini review, what I typically do is switch that to my editing station. So we'll get all of the B-roll from not only here, but uh, on this camera as well. And then I'll show you the next part of the day, which I think is the most boring. It's just sadly editing and sitting behind a computer. And I would say this next part of the day is the most unglamorous uh, side of YouTube, which people typically don't see. It's um, the amount of time spent editing, the amount of time spent behind the computer, actually running, I guess, the, the media business. And I have a really weird workflow um, that I guess just works for me. I typically just dump everything from my SD card. So right now we're recording the screen and I will just bring everything up from today that we recorded. I guess these two clips, boom, we're gonna put this into day in the life of being productive. That's what you wanna see. No, we don't want to do that. So we're gonna do this here, A cam, open that up and we'll dump these two files in. Right now that's 33 gigs and typically a video of mine will be around, I would say anywhere between 70-ish to 80 gigs. So they are quite large. And while that's kind of loading on, you can see the amount of time it takes just using the good old SD card slot of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, no more dongle life. I will actually go to the main app that I think helps me stay productive. And if you're on Mac OS, it's free, it's a Mac app. It's just simply notes. We actually have my to-do list here, which I set every single day. Um, so you can see we banged out morning emails. We went live with the Razor Show, which was actually yesterday. We hit my workout. Uh, we actually recorded the unboxing haul. And my next two things, I guess, for my to-do list for the rest of the day are edit this productivity video and send out the giveaway items to winners. And once I'm all done that, you can see each little checklist. And if I want to add a new one, um, for the end of the day, I actually have something to do with Beth's best, best buy, um, record IG clip for best buy Canada. Um, and that's just something that helps me keep track of obviously what to do in the day. And that corresponds to, I guess, all the emails that I help, or I guess do in the morning. So every time I get like a new email with a new deal, with a new deliverable, I kind of read that off on my email and it goes right to my to-do list. And especially at the end of last year, I have recruited some help. Uh, my editor, Nick, who's actually coming over right now, we just kind of fire over iMessage. Boom, sounds good. Um, you can edit some of these clips as well. So he'll get that and um, yeah, pretty much through iMessage, we just kind of message back and forth. I know people use Slack um, if you have larger teams, but uh, if it's just the two of us, usually through iMessage just kind of works. And I would say the most used app in the arsenal uh, just for YouTube, or I guess a social content creator in general is your video editing app. Since we're over on Mac OS, Final Cut is the way to go. So with this new 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, it is lightning quick. I can scroll through, or I guess, um, go through this timeline like butter and uh, maybe sometimes I listen to music when some of the editing is a bit mundane so I'll just pop headphones in and uh, just crush through b-roll edits and uh, sadly that is the dark part of YouTube that not everyone sees but uh, it's one that's uh, really essential. Okay, so uh, editing for the past four hours, it's just one of those things that you kind of get caught up in and um, you don't realize where time goes and it's yeah, close to 8 p.m. The last part of my day, I usually um, just spend maybe half an hour, 45 minutes working on my house. I think a lot of you know that uh, we are moving into a new house in maybe a year and a half, depending on how the build goes. Um, a full video on that is up this way if you wanna check that out. And then that's my time to de-stress. And then I head home, eat dinner, take home link, walk, bedtime, rinse and repeat. That is kind of, uh, yeah, my day in my life, how I stay productive. These are really the days that a lot of people don't see. A lot of uh, things people really notice is on Instagram, all the highlights, all of the CES, all the traveling. This is very typical. Um, so if you're into this kind of lifestyle, if you wanna be in the YouTube space, be prepared for long grinds like this. I will prove this to you as uh, if I turn these lights off actually. <sighs> this light off. It's pretty much nighttime. <laughs> you can see outside, uh, yeah, nighttime, the lights. Um, yeah, just being a hermit, 
These grind days are definitely necessary. Oh my god! <laughs> this massive light almost just fell. I'm gonna leave the video on that note, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys learned something useful. Happy to answer any questions in the comments. Till tomorrow. Peace.